Hey guys, today we're looking at five reasons why a fiduciary is important for you and your wealth. So let's break down the concept itself, the concept of a fiduciary advisor, all right? So lawyers owe you a fiduciary obligation, so do certain investment professionals, but not all. So what is a fiduciary? A fiduciary is someone who must always ethically and legally put their client's interests ahead of their own. They must act in your best interest at all times, forever and always. That also means they're committed to acting in your best interest and they have to make sure that your interests come first. It's the highest duty of care that exists at law between a professional and their client. You might be wondering, why should I choose a fiduciary? Why do I need to have a fiduciary advisor for my wealth practice? Well, first off, peace of mind. Peace of mind knowing that you never have to worry about a potential conflict that exists between your advisor and you. You have peace of mind knowing that whatever decisions and recommendations they are making, always in your best interest. And that's a significant peace of mind that brings to our clients. Second, transparency. Fiduciaries, they must, by definition, be transparent about the fees they charge, the fees they collect, any potential conflicts of interest, and all the strategies they use. The transparency makes sure that you know what's happening with your fees and why. It also lets you know what's happening with your wealth, how it's being managed and why, which is a critical component of why you are paying someone to give you advice on your wealth in the first place. Third, tailored advice. Fiduciaries take the time to understand their clients' needs and their unique situation and financial goals. They create personalized and tailored solutions on a custom basis for their clients. Number four, higher threshold of compliance. Fiduciaries who work at major Canadian institutions are held to a higher account at their own firm. There's a different level of compliance that exists for fiduciaries than exists for regular investment advisors or regular MFDA advisors. Because they're held to such a higher standard, because there's so much scrutiny on every single trade that they do, compliance must act as a second layer of protection. So if you do deal with a fiduciary, you know one, the advisor owes you that fiduciary obligation, but two, there's a lot of eyeballs looking at every single trade that that fiduciary is doing in each of the client's accounts. It's an added level of protection that I think is critical for clients. Five, higher threshold to get in as a fiduciary. Typically this means more education, more years of experience, and more assets under management. In order to become a fiduciary in Canada, first off, you need to get a CIM or a CFA designation. Second of all, you need a typical minimum years of experience. And third of all, at all firms, you need a minimum asset threshold. You can't just come out of university, graduate and become a fiduciary, become a portfolio manager. It's a lot more work, years of experience and proven ability to manage money. Firms also put in place a system where they'll ask portfolio managers their philosophy of investing to make sure to weed out potential portfolio managers and fiduciaries that might not be acting in the best interest of their clients. So just the barrier to get in, the threshold to get into the exclusive fiduciary club is a lot tougher than any other investment professional in Canada. Now, how can you identify a fiduciary? So in Canada, the good news is we are a regulated body. The investment professionals are regulated and it's easy to see by going online and by asking for credentials whether or not an individual is a fiduciary. Now they should also have one of either CIM or CFA attached to their name as a designation. Another way that you can do it is you can actually scroll the IROC regulatory body website, find the advisor under the search for an advisor tab and see what education, what certifications that individual has. It's pretty neat that it's fully transparent and all the information is out there for you to view. An easier way to do it might just be to ask your advisor, hey, are you a fiduciary? It's a yes or no answer. If you're thinking of switching advisors, make sure you're dealing with someone who is a fiduciary. I can't imagine a world where this would not be table stakes. This should be the minimum accepted level of management for someone in Canada. Why would you not want to have someone who's a fiduciary? If you have the choice of dealing with someone who isn't a fiduciary, who doesn't have to act in your best interest at all times, or dealing with someone who is a fiduciary and must act in your best interest at all times, wouldn't you always want to deal with a fiduciary? Ask the question, ask your advisor if they're a fiduciary, what it means to them and how they manage money. And if you're thinking of switching, ask that individual. 
Are you a fiduciary? How do you manage money? What does it mean to you to be a fiduciary? Because I know what it means to me. If you'd like to talk to a fiduciary, someone like me, who always must act in the best interest of your clients, go to speaktorob.com. We'd love to book a no obligation consultation. Having a fiduciary is a critical step to making sure that your wealth is protected and you know that you can sleep at night having the utmost standard of care to protect you and your family's wealth.